Good morning all. Some new printed circuit boards from JLC PCB. Let's take a look. These are they. They're much smaller than I thought they were going to be. I obviously didn't really think about uh, how they were actually sized because I was looking at something, you know, scaled up two to one on my monitor while I was designing this. But small is beautiful, isn't it? Well, it is in electronics anyway. And here they are. And it's a panel with lots of LEDs and a connector and a five volt label and a ground label. And it says supercomputer. Right, let's get straight on starting to build these things. I need a connector and a bag of LEDs. These are special LEDs. Um, they look like regular five. Well, I won't get one out of the bag. I'll use this one here. They look like regular five millimeter red LEDs, but they're not. They're flashing LEDs. So inside here, you've got an LED die, um, but you've also got a little chip which generates approximately a one hertz flashing frequency. Now I say approximately because when you put a whole load of these together, they all flash at different rates. So I've had this one on my desk for a while. I've just shoved an LED across pairs of these nickel metal hydrides. So each LED is running on 2.4 volts. And over time, they gradually drift apart because their frequencies are slightly different to the point that at, at some point they'll be flashing completely in anti-phase with each other and then over time they'll come back into phase and they'll look like they're ab absolutely flashing in lockstep. The PCB is very simple indeed. Um, there are two copper planes, one on the top, one on the bottom. Now I've allocated the top copper plane to five volts and you can see there that the spokes go from the copper plane into uh, that through hole. Uh, on the ground, of course, it doesn't, but if we flip it over, the ground uh, through plated hole connects to the bottom plane, and that's the same with all the LEDs. Now, these LEDs don't need series resistors because the chip inside the LED has a constant current output, and so you can drive these up to 5 volts. In fact, I've run them higher than that. Uh, you can probably go over 6 volts and they're absolutely fine, uh, so no resistors needed, and that's what makes this PCB really simple. Right, power tool battery, uh, power tool battery voltage monitor with modified output connector, soldering iron, and sponge in a little holder. Right, let's solder my first LED in here. Now it's always worth checking, um, and I'll use a coin cell for this, long leg to the long side of the battery uh, th these are actually flashing leds because i don't want to put static leds in here by mistake so that one's definitely a flashing led uh, they go that way around and i'll shove it in that space why not right let's see how easy this is to solder so i narrowed the spokes down a little bit and i increased the uh, clearance between the, the copper plane and the actual pad or through hole. So hoping it won't absorb too much heat, but let's find out. No, not too bad. Sold is much easier on the one that doesn't have the spokes because of course, although it has spokes on the other side, um, they're just a little further away. Now I've used Bluetack to hold my component in. Uh, there are other techniques to hold your component nice and steadily in the board. Uh, what's your technique, for example? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, next up, um, the connector. I really actually don't like these connectors very much because there's a tendency when you tighten the screws for the thing to twist around. And when you see them on PCBs, they're always twisted like that, aren't they? Yeah, there's just something I don't like about them. If they had little plastic pins or pips on the underside that 
you could make holes for that would be uh, that would prevent them from turning wouldn't it okay let's solder the connector in yeah once again it's slightly more problematic I think I'm going to raise the temperature because it seems to be struggling a little bit with um, it cooling down quickly so if I raise the temperature of the bulk of the thermal mass here there then I'll have a little bit more power at the tip so yeah I'm going to raise that up I suppose actually it's not power at the tip is it? it's energy at the tip thermal energy I want it to have a lot of energy so when that gets sucked out by the board um, the with the more energy in the tip of course the board's going to get that much warmer let's just go over these again at this higher temperature yes i think that's probably better at uh 385 degrees well, i'm going to stop there temporarily because um this is the point at which i can test this so oh five volts is at the top ground is at the bottom flashing LED nice and bright and now I'm going to take a look at the schematic for this because the schematic is actually just that so here's the schematic and it is actually very simple we've got a connector there two uh, through hole two pole 5.0 millimeters pitch and I designed this board actually in millimeters I seem to remember and I've got an LED Now I just used a through hole five millimeter red regular LED but of course I know that the uh, project requires a flashing LED and two net names ground and five volts so uh, I haven't actually wired them together but I've uh, implied that they're wired together by using identical net names and that is my schematic it's very simple and this is the printed circuit board um, so the design as you saw in the schematic was very simple it's just the connector and one LED and then all I did was duplicate that one LED and of course it's got its net names of 5 volts which you might be able to see there and 0 volts or ground there and I simply duplicated it added in a little bit of um, silk screen text 5v ground and the word supercomputer at the end added in some mounting holes and that was simply it now the only downside of drawing such a simple schematic is that if i update the pcb by pressing this button here it says remove leds 2 to leds 22 and if i apply the changes Then you can see click that then you can see that um, 47 of the 48 LEDs have disappeared also the um, copper areas are wrong so I'll do a shift B to update them it'll rebuild the copper areas and I'm left with that so yeah the downside of skimping on your schematic is that uh, if you update your PCB for any reason yeah you lose all the all the leds that's not a problem of course um now that i've got the board in my hand and i'm just soldering leds into it so let's complete a column here uh, one there and one there if i learnt yeah the short leg is the flat on the led so I do it like that now my legs should all be the same way around yes they are let's get those soldered in and have a look at the uh, random patterns that get created when these LEDs drift out of sync the board now has four LEDs oh they're a little bit uh, not quite in line never mind so ground there five volts there now of course they start in sync but then they gradually drift out and the speed of flashing of course is oh two of them are really quite well locked together aren't they but uh, it's definitely an anti-flash there 
Yes, the two in the middle are gradually drifting out of sync. We need some more LEDs, don't we? I was just thinking actually, how much current is this going to take? If we assume that each LED is 20 milliamps, now I know they're flashing 50% off and 50% on, but 20 milliamps, now there are 48 LEDs, four times 12, let's call it 50. 20 times 50 is, oh, I think it's one amp, isn't it? But of course, these are only on for half the time. And once they drift out of sync, the current is relatively steady state. Initially, when you first fire this up, you'll get one amp on for half a second and zero amps for the next half a second. But once they all become asynchronous, you should get about 500 milliamps continuous. I think that's correct. I've now got two columns. So let's try that. Oh, one of them's... No, I think it's my loose connections. So if I make sure that my connection comes away, then they will all sync up again. They will all be in sync. One of them went out of sync very quickly. And then gradually over time you get that nice asynchronous quality which we e-youtubers call supercomputer. Not that it is a supercomputer, it just looks like one. More LEDs required. It's now four by four. Okay, five volts ground. Oh, it's getting bright. I mean, if you did this with flashing white LEDs, yeah, now of course you're getting spillover in terms of the way the camera's picking this up. It's fine with my own eyes, but the camera sees off LEDs that are next to on LEDs as sort of half-lit LEDs. Yeah, that's interesting. How can I improve the quality of the image on the camera? I'll have a think about that, but that's working nicely. Uh, we've got some nice randomization going there. Looks a bit supercomputer-ish. I've got the pitch of this very fine. I mean, I could have gone for an overall bigger PCB and had them slightly less close together. I think I put them at eight millimeters uh, pitch and they're five millimeter LEDs. So yeah, they're quite close together. Anyway, onwards. Actually, that's looking better now. I've got a feeling it might be light level because the sun's come out a bit, so the camera aperture has closed a little bit. That does look a bit better now, doesn't it? Onwards! Soldering shot, because I've been doing quite a lot of the soldering off camera for the last few rows, columns. So, soldering shot on camera. There you go. Six by four. Oh, reboot. See how quickly they go out of sync and settle into a nice random pattern. I got six more rows, uh, five here and one by the connector. So let's get all the LEDs now on the board. Come on, son, come back out. It makes for better photography. Hmm, this one caught me out. Um, it has its legs the right way around, so long leg on the long part of the battery, but its flat is on the wrong side. Yeah, so the flat is on the top there, I think you can see, and that's the long leg. I mean, you do get these, you just got to uh, think, wait a minute, something's not right there. Actually, I can do the same thing with exposure compensation. If I bring that down to the minimum, I think that looks better than if I have that. Oh no, that looks terrible. Yeah, so exposure compensation, make it nice and dark. You get a better flashing effect, don't you? That works. This is uh, two thirds done. Oh, what's happened to my exposure compensation? Let's just watch it reboot, as it were, because I suppose these are digital elements, but they're all clocked by separate clock circuits. 
But yeah, that quite, I don't need these two here, do I? Let's take them out. They're just distracting. Yeah, that settles down into its asynchronicity quite nicely. Let's finish the project. I uh, just had this running for a while. Uh, five minutes or so. It actually gets quite warm, this. I mean, that could be an argument for putting resistors in series with these, but they don't need it. But at five volts, yeah, they do take quite a bit of current. And yes, quite a bit of heat there. Won't last long on four inner loops or ladders as they are. And uh, yeah, there it is. There's the finished PCB. I'll just glitch it to reset it. Oh, that's only more than a glitch. There it is. And I'll uh, do the exposure compensation. We'll take that right down. Yes, that looks rather nice. And as you saw, it's really simple. Uh, you can draw a very primitive schematic, just the connector and one of the LEDs, and then just go control, paste, 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 and place all the LEDs actually on the PCB. I mean, you could draw them all on the schematic. I just felt that it would be simpler to make a simple schematic and a more complex uh, PCB layout. Stick a few holes in the corners and a bit of writing on there. Job done. Supercomputer. Cheerio.